Hey, it's Mark Andrews again with uh, episode 6 of the 2020 OCFOA Plays of the Week. I'm doing pretty good since the season has started. Might might set a record for Plays of the Week. Anyway, I thought I'd start off with some humor before we get into the clips. Take a look at this. This is a cartoon done by Marshall Ramsey, uh, Mississippi Today. Somebody sent it to me and it just cracked me up. If you want to read it all, just hit pause or... Google uh, Marsh, Marshall Ramsey, Mississippi Today. Uh, what does it say? New new football signals for 2020, and you'll, you'll see it. Okay, opening kickoff, I think, is an appropriate place to start our uh, play of the week. Um, there's nothing big here, but Steve has some really good observations uh, that I'd like to share. So the first thing is just physical appearance. Okay, this guy down here at the bottom of the screen on the on the bottom left, don't do that. We, we're not baseball umpires. It doesn't look good, and you're not going to get a better look at the action. This guy up here at the 35, he looks he looks athletic, ready, balanced. It all these guys do. Um, so this is the look we want, you know most of the time. This is the stance you want almost in every play from scrimmage. Um, he, My only criticism of this guy is that he's probably a little too close to the field. Um, I've, I've come to the conclusion that you should be about a foot back. Um, but, yeah, you know, it's, it's personal preference. Anyway, let's move on. Now, this is the next point that um, Steve makes. Um this area between the 20 and the 35, this is where the majority of our fouls occur. You know, blocks in the back, holding, blindside blocks. Now, I'm a, a headlinesman, and my starting point on a kickoff is the 30-yard line. I should be drifting up to somewhere between the 35 and the 40, maybe to the 40, and settling in. And as Steve points out, th this guy here, this is a great place for him to settle, and you're just looking for competitive matchups. You know, you're not, you're not, you're not don't want to, you know, officiate air. So start looking for those competitive matchups, and uh, you know, you also want to know where the blockers are going because the blockers are going to tell you which way the runner's going to go, right? So you you got to you got to process all of this really quickly, and um, you know, then you just do what you do, officiate. And nothing happens in this play other than, you know, some good tackling. So uh, let's move on. Okay, on this play we're going to talk about zones. So uh, let's take a look at this uh, offensive set. It's a it's a balanced formation. We've got two receivers on either side. Um, so uh, the headlinesman has responsibility for th these two receivers. The back judge is going to take a look at this guy, and um, the line judge has this receiver. Now, and of course, each of the flank officials has to keep an eye on the, on their uh, tackle, snap tackle back, right? Okay, so let's take just take a look. Uh, Watch that inside receiver on the line judge side. He starts to go out, and then he starts going back in to block. Now, when you see this as a flank official and as a back judge, this often can be a blindside block. Okay, when is our what we used to, you know we refer to as a crack back. Okay, so when you see that receiver moving towards the line from out, you know from from the outside position. You got you know, antenna up, right? So, here we go. Who's got what? Okay, so near flank has, oh, Steve's got it right there. Zone one wide receiver crack back. That's what he's got to focus on. Back judge, you're going to switch your focus to zone one and two. This is a running play. Back judges, you got to help us on running plays. You have to, okay? Um, it's you're the key to uh, a lot of our success. Okay, 
So the referee's got zone two, which is the front edge of the blocking. The umpire's got zone three, which is the backside. And of course, the opposite flank has all you know the wide view. He's got everything else. All right. Okay. Great job uh, by this crew. Uh, you know, being present. I love the way the white hat came in right away. Um, probably he is probably telling everybody the play is over. Uh, the line judge has got uh, the dead ball signal already up. Um, this, you know, this is what we want. This is what we want to see. Umpires there, and I like the fact that the umpire is not, you know racing in to get the ball he's making sure that the guys in front of him are are not gonna you know commit do anything stupid all right let's finish it up here we go he even helps him up okay there's one more thing I want to point out to you on this play let's go back now this guy right here um, he's a side judge now watch him. The when you when you're working seven man mechanics, your job as a deep flank is to do what's called an accordion. You come in hard on every play, and you're looking for you know dead ball stuff. And watch this guy. I mean, comes in great accordion, and then a really nice strong signal, you know. To the uh, headlinesman, hey, third down. Uh, this, you know, this is what separates average officials from good or great officials. Okay, it's stuff like this. All right, let's move on. Okay, I don't know if you've noticed or not, but we're not really talking about fouls in this uh, in this video yet. We are talking about uh, mechanics. We're focused on mechanics and the way this crew works. I like the way this crew works. Um, I'm going to show you this play in real time. Just kind of, it, it is going to be a um, an interception by the defense on a on a on a screen pass. Let's just take a look. Okay, we've got a man in motion. We've got the defense adjusting. We've got bad color. Okay, let's go back. Oh. Ah! Okay, here we go. Now, I'm going to turn on the annotations. Now, as as I said, we have man in motion. Whose responsibility is that? That is the line judge's responsibility. Any receiver in motion, the flank official on the side of the field that he started from, has responsibility for that man's uh, legal motion. Okay, if he turns up field too sh too quickly, that is that's illegal motion. Um, now the head linesman over here, he can he can help if he sees it, he can throw it, but it's the line judge's responsibility. All right. Now we're going to talk about the referee and the umpire. Um, the referee is out of frame, but he is on the throwing hand side of the. Um, of the quarterback and in San Diego and I, I would say in Orange County we would like the umpires to be more to the left of the offensive formation if the referee is on the right um, and we're talking about the offensive formation so um, you know referee is no longer looking at his key is his initial key is that left tackle right but as soon as we st the play starts and we see um, put arrow here, we see this. This is bad color, right? We referee's attention immediately goes here. He is watching for a hold. Okay. Now umpire does a good job of reading screen. He moves up, and uh, he's looking. He's looking for at linemen. Where what are they doing? Where are they going? And uh, he's also got to keep an eye on where this ball ends up. Now, remember, if we have ineligible receivers downfield, they have to be beyond two yards, beyond the line of scrimmage, 
at the time the ball is released, not when it's crossing the <laughs> crossing the line of scrimmage. Okay. Now, this is a Steve started this uh, I think last year or two years ago, and I, I guys, I really encourage you to incorporate this. I'm talking to flank officials right now. Incorporate this into your routine. When a ball is thrown, just two things, f forward or backward, and beyond or before. So if it's beyond the line of scrimmage and it's a forward pass, obviously it's a forward pass if it's beyond the line of scrimmage, you got forward beyond. If it's, if it's behind the line of scrimmage, you got forward behind, okay? I said forward before, didn't I? Forward behind. Um, keep that in mind. And why does that matter? It, there's a lot of reasons. Okay, if, if the if the pass is behind the line of scrimmage, and it's caught uh, or not caught, and the defense makes contact with the receiver, there's no there's no pass interference, right? We can't have pass interference on a pass not that does not go beyond the line of scrimmage. Conversely, if it goes beyond the line of scrimmage. And we've got blockers downfield beyond that two yards spot. We may have um, ineligible receivers downfield. If they're actually blocking after when the ball is thrown, we could have um, OPI. So there's a lot to process here. Okay, none of that happens, <laughs> by the way. Um, so we've got a poorly thrown ball there. Uh, the defense intercepts, and we got line judge. Putting the ball on the big line, love that, but he is not doing something that he should be doing, and this uh, side judge comes in and saves his butt, point and direction. Now, I know everybody in the stadium knows whose ball it is, but this is important. You want any time we have a change of possession, we want a point. Otherwise, we'd be going up with the next down, right? So, again, when you when that when that play occurs. In front of you, and it's a change of possession, whether it's a fumble or an interception, point direction. All right, let's move on. All right, so this is an interesting play. Um, it deals with disconcerting acts. Uh, you're all aware of the rule change that a disconcerting act is now a five-yard penalty instead of 15 yards. Okay, so uh, let's keep an eye on the defense. All right. And Steve points out that the defense calls move when the uh, when the uh, offensive line shifts. That is not that is not a disconcerting act. That is considered legal, and the offense shouldn't react to it. Um, now I'm going to show this to you with the audio on, so you can get an idea um, of what we're talking about. You can't really hear it, but you'll you'll see the guy clap his hands. He's the guy that's calling out move. Um, it's this guy right here. Where's my arrow? Where's my arrow? Um, so, Steve, great job. Fault start is a correct call, but if the defense had made any movement or made a call that simulates a snap or confuses the offense, then we would penalize the defense. Now five yards for disconcerting acts. Okay. And <laughs> signal 23. I thought that was so interesting. Why in the hell did they? The illegal equipment signal being for disconcerting acts, but uh, that's okay. Okay, so now I'm going to uh, turn the audio on and just let, it, let this run. And keep your eye. Uh, so turn the audio on. Annotations off. Go back to the beginning. This isn't easy, guys. I'll tell you. Okay. So, again... You're going to see this guy clap, and I'm pretty sure he's the one that yells move. You can't really hear it, but you sort of can. Right there. And, and, we, get the, and, we, get the, and we get the call. All right? That's not, that, that's all. That's it. Let's move on. Okay, we're going to talk again about responsibilities, again, between the referee and the umpire on this one. I'm going to let the annotations play. Uh, I think it's it's more effective that way. Um, do a lot of little slow-mo here. Okay, so Steve's talking about 
who ha- who has what in terms of responsibility for um, for this action. So uh, referee has this right here. Hopefully, flank officials watching this. Okay, and the um, the umpire has this inside action. Now we're going to get a guy. The quarterback's going to be scrambling now. And the umpire moves to the outside. Okay, he still needs to be looking here. This is still the a referee's uh, uh, area of responsibility. And I'm going to back this up a little bit so you can see this block. Okay. Oh, I think I, I think I missed one of these comments. <laughs> Let's go back here. Yeah. Okay. Not an illegal block in the back. And then, you, as you can see, the umpire throws. Um, what do you all think? Uh, I, for me, that's that, that, that blocks to the side. There, you know, uh, a block in the back should be in the numbers, between the shoulder blades, you know. Um, but, you know, we only have this one angle. Now, I like that. Yeah, this is great. So, yeah, since I'm a flank official, I, I love to see good flank mechanics. And at the goal line, it's so important. The only criticism I would have is get that re- that photographer out of there. He shouldn't be that close. But look how far back this guy is. You know, he's out of harm's way, and he can make a great. You know, he can make have great judgment from that spot. So you flank officials don't be crowding this pylon stay away from that thing okay uh, this is a better position six feet perfect and especially if you read the receivers coming your way and it's going to be at you know there's going to be a play at the pylon get back all right let's move on okay on this play again nothing really substantial happens Steve's talking more about mechanics, and he's getting very fine. And this is this is an all-star game. This is like, these guys haven't worked in a while, but uh, you know, I, I love the way that Steve, you know, fine tunes all this stuff. Um, he points out that the back judge isn't standing on the end line; he's a yard back. That's good positioning. Flank officials, this is inside the five. Where are we going? To the goal line, and we're going to move back. Remember, three to six feet. Off that pylon, don't stand straddling the pylon. Um, referee's position, you know, uh, he, he, he's, he's not 15 yards back, he's 16 yards back. Uh, uh, you know, who cares? I guess Steve does, but I, <laughs> I certainly wouldn't ding him for that. Um, okay, so now we have a fumble. So let's talk about fumble mechanics. This is, I mean, this, this, you know, this is critical time, right? We're inside the five. Okay. Now, look at, I love the way the umpire comes in and digs. He's, you know, come on, get off, get off, get off. Um, we've got the back judge closes in. He realizes that the flanks are, you know, quite a bit away. Flank officials in this situation, stay out of there. You want to be looking for guys pushing and shoving, doing stupid things uh, in this scrum, right? Uh, we do, this is a seven man game as I pointed out and I uh, I believe the side judge is going to come in on this yeah there he is this guy hustles it's great he's just telling hey guys give it back up back up now we have a recovery by the offense and the umpire is signaling the next down uh, Steve thinks it actually should be the referee uh, you know again as long as as long as we get it done and uh, you know eventually uh, the all the crew goes up with the with the numbers. That's what we want, and uh, we just move on. All right, I love this play, and it just uh, it shows Mr. Coover is a student of the game. Uh, this is a run pass option uh, play, and Steve breaks down how we can read this and where to focus, and um, we're going to see some officials not focus correctly. Okay, so we've got to have a double team right here and this defensive end unblocked. 
So this is the key. This the, what this guy does will determine what the uh, what how the play develops. Okay. So Steve says if the umpire had seen this double team, he should know that we have you know that the play's going the other way, and uh, he should be focused on the point of attack. Instead, he's not. He's he keeps his vision on the on this double team. And uh, he never really looks at the uh, the action. Okay, so quarterback reads the defensive end crashing. See, so he's right, right there. He's crashing. So he pulls rather than giving it to the running back. If that guy hadn't crashed, he probably would have given it to the running back. Okay. Um, you can see the umpire still looking in the wrong place. So that's, a, that's a, hey, let's we all make mistakes, right? This guy's a good umpire. Um, so if we know the ball is coming this way as in, in a sweep, would these two blocks become critical? And uh, boy, you know, back judges again on a non-pass play, you've got to help us out. And your focus should be on this guy right here. Flank officials looking here. Okay. Okay, he's still pointing out the umpires looking at the wrong place. This looks like a real clean block here on the edge. Yeah, it's a great block. And you know, now now Steve is talking about seven man mechanics. And in, inside the two yard line, the uh, field judge, I think I've been calling this guy a side judge all game. I, I can never remember the, the, which one is which, but whatever. He's a deep flank. Uh, inside the two yard line, the seven man mechanics, uh, the deep flank has the uh, spot. And But, you know, we do 99% five man mechanics I can't blame this guy this is his natural instincts to to be down there uh, but he should have stopped at the five and um, and you know just let the field judge take care of it um, and then we signal timeout that's a great job right there by that field judge and that tells everybody we don't have a touchdown right and uh, okay here we go Oh, nice job by the back judge. They're coming in <laughs> after he's already, whatever. It's all good. All right, let's move on. All right, once again, no foul on this play. We're just talking mechanics. We've got a two-back set here. Like, he, like Steve points out, this is a very common offensive uh, set when we have short yardage. Um the umpire recognizes it and focuses on the correct blocks. Close, 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 right? Here comes the flank official, and it's the ball was to his side. It's his call, right? Great job with the dead ball signal. Closes in hard, putting his foot down where the progress spot is. Just, you know, just an excellent job all around. Okay, this is the very next play, and I'm just going to let this run. See if you can see some problems here. Um, this is very typical. The offense is coming up to the line very quickly. They're going to snap the ball quickly. Remember, we everybody's got to be set for a second, right? We don't. We're not going to let them, you know, get to the line and go. All right. So watch. See if you pick anything up. Did you see that? Let's go back. Now we're gonna talk about some other things here, but uh, keep your eye on this guy right here. Watch. Ooh, 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 ooh. Okay, so that's a false start. And <laughs> <laughs> and the referee missed it, and Steve was telling me that uh, the guy literally left the room while <laughs> reviewing this play. I had to go to the bathroom, you know. And, and and you know, guys, we do we do we do miss stuff like this, and you know, got to get it, shut it down right away. 
Now, um, let's look at some other stuff. Okay. Now, Steve pointed out to me that this back judge came with, kept drifting in during the last few three or four plays. On you can go back and review and watch him. There's no need to do that, back judges, unless you've got something. You know, you got to talk to somebody. But just don't wander in there for no for no good reason. That he doesn't like that. Um, now let's watch the flank officials. Okay, let's turn on the uh, the annotations. Sorry about that. Here we go. Okay, so he's pointing out uh, just what I said. <laughs> and uh, watch him in real time. Oh, yeah. He'd bunny hop in the pea patches, old Chick Hearn used to say. Any of you Laker fans out there? Okay, so small thing. But flank officials, a play like this, you, th this is not the line judge's call. The, the ball is on the head linesman's side. And look, this line judge is running in in the end zone. Don't do that. Don't come in unless you're absolutely sure the ball's in the end zone. Don't run in in the end zone. Otherwise, what's going to happen? You're going to have to adjust out of the end zone. And that looks bad. All right? Just small stuff. You know, it's not it's not you know world ending, but you know try to keep that in mind. And um, yeah, he you know I I think the head linesman went up, and then the lead line judge went up. Um, that's fine, I guess. Um, but again, you know, just the little stuff. Um, you know, tweak your game, and uh, you know you'll be that much better. All right, um, that's it for this set of uh, plays from Steve. I'm going to stop here, and um, Steve is promising me some calibration plays for roughing uh, the holder and the kicker. I haven't seen them yet, but if he sends them, I will make my next video with uh, that in mind. Um, all right. Well, I hope you all have a good one. Stay safe and wear a mask, right? Hey, I really want to apologize for the length of time between these last uh, episode five and six. I have been making videos, well, actually duplicating videos for the um, California Football Officials Association for their new website. Uh, you guys in California, if you uh, haven't seen the website, it's awesome. The address for the website is cfoaref.org. -E not cfoa.com. There is a cfoa.com out there. Uh, that is not the new website. cfoaref.org. Um, this they did a fantastic job on it. It's really nice, and it's going to get better. Um, hey, if you like these videos and you want to find out when I release a new one, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Just click on my picture in the upper right-hand corner. It'll take you to my YouTube channel. Click the red subscribe button and you're good to go. Uh, if you've missed any of the other plays of the week, there's a whole playlist out there. Click on the link on the left. This is Mark Andrews signing off.